Hey guys, Saf here with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today we're going to be looking at the systems that are involved for damage reduction. We'll be taking a look at how damage reduction is calculated, what kind of numbers you should be aiming to reach if you want to maximize your damage reduction without being overly inefficient, and we'll also take a look at the other two systems that are in place that you can use to reduce damage. So the first thing to cover, there are three main areas in the game where you can reduce damage. The first one is the universal damage reduction percentage. This applies on every champion uh, and is based off your defense value. Uh, there are multiplication effects in the game, such as strength and buff, which will reduce damage on a fixed percentage measure. And there are also damage transfer abilities or effects within the game. So let's first take a look at damage reduction. So this is the formula that the game calculates based off your defense value, and it returns a percentage number that it applies, that it multiplies with the damage that an enemy will deal to you, uh, and that is what's left over at the end. So the main thing to note here is there is a cap of 85%. This means that no matter what steps you take, unless there is an effect in, the pl in, in place that completely reduces or removes the damage, I'm thinking of uh, San Sepulchre, is it Sepulchre Sentinel or San Lash? I always mix the two up. Those champions will eliminate damage. Otherwise, the damage reduction can only go as far as 85%. This basically means that it's very difficult for you to completely remove the damage. The formula you see on screen here is the formula that I personally use. I know there are simplified versions of that uh, in, in play. And this formula is adjusted for the various types of ignore defense and drop defense. But effectively, you pass your defense value through where it says defense here, uh, and that will then return the percentage for you. We're going to have a look at the math behind this in a second, where we'll show all the different um, sort of changes. But the way that this works is essentially a lot of your initial damage reduction percentage is front loaded, and then diminishing returns will apply where you'll eventually start getting to very small gains per defense value. So there are two impacts, uh, two things that you can do to impact defense. So if your champion is under a decrease defense debuff, what will happen to this formula is the defense value must be multiplied by 0 0.6, which is 60%. And that will then return a percentage value. So this is where you see the defense minus defense times 0 0.6. If you are under an ignore defense component, it will do the same kind of multiplication, but instead of 0 0.6, it will be a 0 point whatever the, the sum of all ignore defense effects are. So ignore defense is additive. So if I've got Helm Smasher at 25% and Savage at 25%, I will times defense by 0 0.5. That is 50%. If I have another 5% from a cruel set, it goes on top. If a skill will also ignore defense by five, uh, by 50%, then that gets added on top. Therefore, under certain champions, I think Rotus is one of them, you can completely ignore defense if you have the right combinations of Helm Smasher, Skill, Savage, Cruel in the mix. And then of course, there is a scenario where you could be both Ignore, uh, debuffed with decreased defense and ignore defense. Now the key thing to note here, ignore defense is based on the remaining defense after the debuff. That basically means the defense is multiplied by 0 0.6 and then what's left of that defense value is then multiplied by the ignore defense value. It goes in those steps. So how does that look in terms of the numbers? So what I've done here is I have mapped out the damage reduction percentage against your defense values. So you can see uh, the defense is going up by about 200 per tick here. And then the defense reduction is going up from zero to hundred percent. So we can never get to hundred percent. We know this, it's capped at 85, but you'll see quite quickly here, the, the effect of diminishing returns at zero to say 2000 defense, we've got around about, what is that number there? About 40, 55% you gain from having 2000 defense. Whereas when you start getting up to your 4,000, adding another 2,000 isn't going to give you an awful lot. So on the DR details tab, I have mapped out essentially a series of defense numbers your champion will have, and then the corresponding damage reduction numbers for those defense numbers. I've also factored in the differences if you added an increased defense buff. So on the first column, it's, the, it's your defense number without the buff, then what it would be if you applied the buff, and the corresponding damage reductions for both values. You'll notice I've highlighted 4,200 before an increased defense buff. I would recommend anyone building a champion to aim for this number before you apply increased defense. What I mean by this, if you're late game or end game, if you want to build your champions as efficiently and tanky as possible, 
you should aim for 4200 if you're bringing increased defense or around about six which was translates to 6720 after this point you're better off building health the exception to this rule is arena where you are likely going to apply decreased defense which means that your effectiveness of defense and possibly bringing increased defense is much more difficult therefore having a bigger health pool in terms of hit points is much better however in a general pve sense 4200 with increased defense is a good break point now if you're early to mid game you'll have heard hal hades say this a lot on his youtube videos when he's talking about defense values you should aim to get 4200 as a, almost like with the increased defense buff built into that number so what I mean by that is you would be looking to get, if you were bringing increased defense, somewhere around about 25 to 2600 defense, um, then you would apply increased defense. And things like Iron Brago Passive can help with you there. The reason why we, I, I'm suggesting that is you're going to struggle to get all your other stats and these higher stats for your defense value in the early to mid game. But certainly late game to end game stages, you should 100% be aiming for 4200 with the inclusion of increased defense on top of that. Now, the reason why I say this, once you've got that increased defense buff on, you're looking at 84.04% damage reduction. We know the cap is 85%, which means the only addition you can get is essentially 9.96% damage reduction by adding more defense. Now, in order for you to achieve that, you have to add a substantial amount more defense. If I was to have, say, 6,000 defense with increased defense, all I'm gaining is around about 0.82% damage reduction, where that difference between 1800 defense could be translated into 20 to 30,000 hit points, and that will give you more effective HP. So when I say effective HP, for those who probably haven't played a lot of games or maybe don't know the, the definition, that basically means once I've got my hit points and I've passed it through any sort of damage reduction modules, any defense mitigations, any of those types of things, how much hit points will an enemy need to hit you for to be able to defeat your champion? Now you'll gain more effective HP by adding more HP after 4200 if you are bringing increased defense with that number than you would adding more defense. It's always that balance with diminishing returns. Eventually defense is going to be inv not very valuable at all. You'd be better off going for HP. The summary of this section is 4200 for late game to end game if you're bringing increased defense. Otherwise you should aim for more defense versus early to mid game, aim for around about 2600 to 2700 defense with an increased defense if you want to maximize your damage reduction. So the second main principle of damage reduction is multiplication effects. This is based on the calculated damage after all the effects have gone through. So once we've worked out the damage reduction, once we've worked out any sort of masteries, any, anything else that gets thrown into the calculation, enemies crit damage multiplier, what's left will then get multiplied by any damage reduction multiplication effects. So the, the main one that obviously will come to most people's minds is the strength and buff. Other things that are considered multiplication damage reduction effects, mastery such as blast proof, improved parry, delay death, skills such as venom mage, geomancer, duchess, norog, candrophon, there's a, there's a couple of others as well, some of them are self buffs. Multiplication effects are very powerful because they are a multiplication effect, they will take a flat percentage off of the damage. However, you have to remember they are multiplicative, which means that they will not reduce the damage to zero. That's not possible. So I've I've created a quick tool here, nothing fancy, but assume that my champion was taking 10,000 damage. And then with a defense of 2,500, my champion essentially would result in having uh, received 3,106 damage. This is just factoring in the standard damage reduction percentage obviously doesn't take into account any other effects such as ignore defense, decrease defense, or any of those things. Now, let's assume I've got strengthen. If I add strengthen into here, it will reduce my damage by 776, which is 25%, obviously. Now, what happens if I say, okay, well, I've got strengthen, and I've also got uh, Duchess's passive. So that would reduce the damage by 25% if it's an AOE ability. Now, just for, for argument's sake and for a math experiment, let's say we had strength and Duchess's passive on at the same time. Well, that would basically mean that instead of me taking 3,106, I'll actually take 1,747. This translates to a 43.75% damage reduction. Now, this is the effect of multiplication. Because it's not 25 plus 25, it doesn't mean I'm going to reduce 50%. It's going to go take the number of 1,000 or 3106 multiplied by 1 minus 0 
and then we're going to do the same thing again for Duchess's passive. So you get this thing of eventually it's going to reduce itself down, but it will never get to zero because it would have to keep iterating over the multiplicative, multiplicative effects. Now, let's just say for argument's sake, now my champion is actually in stalwart as well. So not only am I getting the strength and buff, I'm getting the Duchess passive. Now I'm getting 30% damage from the stalwart, which is also reducing AoE damage effects. Well, now we're up to 1,223 damage, which is 60%. If we were to add all these together, that should really be 80%. So you see how this multiplicative changes from additive. Additive would just basically multiply by 80%. So that's multiplica multiplicative effects or multiplication damage reduction effects. They are very powerful. Passives like Duchess are incredibly powerful in Arena, incredibly powerful against big AOE hits, um, and things like Stalwart in Clan Boss are very powerful. So the final thing to cover is damage transfer effects. So what I mean by damage transfer is before any damage is calculated, if there is an effect in play that transfers damage from one champion to another, then this is done first. It's done on raw damage. So the things we're talking about here obviously are ally protection, things like guardian artifact sets. And then there are some champions, not many, and I've listed the ones here that are, that will do an effect based on um, conditions if they apply. So for example, a super war caller will transfer any critical hit, 30% of that damage she will take instead. And that is done as raw damage. So that means it will reduce, it will take 30% of the non-crit damage if the attack would crit. Tainix Hate Flyer, Hate Flower will take 5%. Helior takes, I think, 20%. Um, and I think Mikolos and Tyrant Titan, especially Tyrant Titan is, is subject to different champions. Now, the key thing to remember with these types of um, effects is because it is a transfer effect, the damage that your transferer, your protector will take is based on their own stats. So if it's a critical hit that your ally is receiving and the protector is taking damage from the ally, that is based on crit damage on the protector side, not the person dealing damage. So if you've got these types of champions, you really want to avoid crit damage unless you can ensure that the enemy is not going to crit you. I've previously done a big video on ally protection. I'm going to link it in the video, uh, in the description below, so if people can go and see it. It's no point me going over it again because it's such a deep topic and so complicated that I could be here for another 20 minutes. Um, it also touches on how Guardian works and interacts with ally protection. And I think it also touches on the transfer skills. But the key thing to remember here is the difference between the last two damage reduction effects. They're all based on a kind of a post-processing state. So damage reduction is applied to the damage that remains. Um, damage multiplication effects is applied to the damage that remains. Transfer is done before any multiplication effects. So this is huge for things like the clan boss where he multiplies his damage based on the number of turns he's got to. Well, the transfer is done before that takes place. So you can actually mitigate substantially more damage than what you would possibly be able to do with Stalwart. So just a quick side note, um, ENG has done a very good video on this topic where he has highlighted uh, the best ways and, and sort of min-maxed his way to a almost unkillable killable comp where it doesn't rely on the unkillable buffs such as block damage um, but instead he uses all the different tools and techniques that I've mentioned in this video to try and mitigate as much incoming damage as possible and to make your team survive as long as possible. So I recommend you watching that, it's a really good watch. So I hope that was interesting for everyone watching. Um, if you reached this far, as always, I say you're a uh, a true for science geek when it comes to these videos. I will leave a link to the Google sheet that I've been using in this video in the description below for people to access, make a copy of, use whatever they want as a reference point and understand the differences. If there are any questions or comments after this video, please leave them below. And if anyone wants me to put any charts or anything together, just, uh, just leave them in the comments and I will check them as this video is posted. And once again, if you've liked this content, please give it a like and subscribe. And we will be posting on a regular basis, as always, every week with more for science videos in Rage Shadow Legends.